Yeah. How are you doing? How are you doing? You look pain face it. Pain. <laughs> <laughs> you like pain. Oh That's the right God. word. Pain. Yes, it's the word. It's the word. What does it mean? I have no idea what it means. But I hear people use it. I also hear people use it from the UK. I don't know what pain uh, means, but it's a slang. Uh, it's it's a slang. You think beautiful um, when you're like lighting and it's Thank and you stuff so glowing. Much. That's the with the glow. Um, I'm black internally is screaming. <laughs> <laughs> black is beauty. You're living. You're living in black is the beauty. So, um, Asha, I've seen you perform the uh, Valentine's, the Valentine's package. What was it called? How? What? Um, how am I forgetting it? How? Uh, um. Oh my goodness. The name of the show. Yeah, yeah. The name of the show. Um, it was something along the lines of "Will you be my Valentine?" <laughs> Mm-hmm. I really don't recall Peter would kill me. I don't recall. But that uh, you are, you know, you have this energy. I mean, you can scream. You can actually really scream. And uh, you're acting. Someone is pulling the rope. But actually not pulling it. But someone can see that like, oh, she's dead. The next minute she's dead. If she stays like this, she'll be dead. I mean, you are at, are you, are you? Yes. <laughs> when I can remember. <laughs> wow, your memory yeah, is yeah, amazing. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are you are you Asha? You're doing journalism? No, education. Uh, education, yeah. Oh I think I missed you with someone else then for that. Yeah, but that was really amazing Thank what you, you put so up. Much. Um I I missed watching you on the night experience. I would have really loved to watch you so Let's talk about you. Who are you? Your full names? When you start doing poetry, what inspires you to do poetry? I mean, I need to get into your mind. Yeah. Let me just get into this. My name is Taban Asha. Taban Asha. You don't have another name. No, that's is it, okay. Called, yeah, Taban Asha, like a cool name. Yeah, I have I'm, tried, but I. <laughs> you know, I'm called Linda Dina, so people keep asking me, "What's your other name?" Mm. Like, you guys don't have any other names. It's just, it's cool. just it's cool just parents, Taban yeah? Asha, right? <laughs> and it's so funny because I used to think my name is so weird as a kid. I just realized it was a cool yeah. name later on in life. And I was like, oh my goodness. Let's don't do a- that to your children. <laughs> you shouldn't do that. Because we, when I give birth, I'll, I'll have them like serious sentences for names. I'll give them serious sentences. Because what I've gone through, sentences. I don't want my children to, have, to go through them. I'd want to traumatize my children and give them like random names like Tree. Tree? Yeah. Just so they can be confused as well. Like I also don't know why. <laughs> True. Stormy. Okay. Stormy. Wave. Uh, water. Some. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Like in the beginning, it was my best friend's idea. But then I thought about it. I was like, that'd be amazing. Like the kids would be confused the whole time because people would ask them, why is your name Tree? I, I don't know. They also don't know, just, yeah, they can't go away with it. Just cool parents. I get it. I guess <laughs> I understand it. So mm-hmm. how do you get to poetry? Who did you start? What inspires you? I mean, I have all these questions. I'm like, I started, oh my God, how do I get to poetry? I don't even, to be honest, I don't even remember watching someone. I don't remember seeing someone and being like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. I need to try it out. No, because I was... I was quite young when I started writing. Me, I consider it writing in general, not just poetry, because I started writing little songs when I was eight, and I'd give them to my auntie. But I don't know what happened to the songwriting. I can't write a song. Eight years. I don't know what I was doing at eight years. I was still, what is it called? Suckling. Suckling my thumb. Yes, I'd go to my bedroom and close myself there and suckle my thumb. I have to brag as an intelligent kid. (laughs) I was. It's the Northern James. I get it. I get it. (laughs) So yeah, I started writing little little songs. I'd give it to my auntie, and she's like, "This is this is cute." And she started calling me my songwriter, my songwriter. So I think I grew into whatever it is the stage before puberty, and I was like, "No, this is not my life. I can't be writing these things. I'm not a nerd. I'm cool. I'm too cool for that. Too cool for this. <laughs> I can't be doing this." But then later on, in um, my primary six. As 11, then our English teacher tasks us. He's like, you know, I don't, he was called Mr. Richard. Yeah, Mr. Richard. He's like, why don't you guys write poems? Mm-hmm. Three different poems about different things. I had never in my life written a poem, but we had done poetry. Like I'd seen, let me say, a structure, even from MDDs where they make, oh, we're P3 is doing a poem. This is, yeah, so 
I, I just got that from that knowledge and I wrote about flowers. Yeah, it was a poem about flowers and it had so much rhyme. And my teacher was like, this is actually really nice. You know, you have a future doing this. And to be honest, the things we tell kids matter. Because it's like the moment you told me you have a future doing this. It just, and you started seeing a future, like, just, and here I was you like, are. I need to here do this. Are. I have a future <laughs> doing this. And here I am. Here I am, because I write from plays, sto short stories, plays, short stories, then po poems as well. But I have to say poetry has skyrocketed. Like, it has gone beyond all the other things that I can do. I get your point. Yeah. So... Yeah, I started right then serious writing because, okay, I was writing, but I wouldn't consider it serious writing. So I joined secondary, Chibuli Secondary School. It's a Muslim school, so I'm not trying to come to my, my Muslim institutes because I've been in Muslim institutes, yes, even in my university. I'm not trying to come for them or anything, but the truth has to be said, they need to work more on... I don't know what we should call this, but some of them call them maybe into the old Zongu. I don't know why they brand it that way. I don't understand, but the culture in Muslim institutions is not that, like you'd see, Gayaza poetry is not something new. Nabisusa poetry is not something new. Like these kinds of co-curriculars are not something new. When you come to Muslim schools, it's more of it's sports. It's sports, religion, it's... It's and I think class. it goes back to the core values of the, of the institution. Anyway, yeah? that is true. Yeah. So anyway, I joined Chibuli. I, I still kept on writing. I was still the, my extraordinary self, my extra self. So I'd write um, a few opportunities, of course, would come in here and there where I would have to showcase my writing, whether it's poetry or writing plays. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'd compete in writing plays and all that. Yeah, and I... Then I remember a new teacher comes, Mr. Taliku, and he's interested. He's like, this is amazing. What you're doing is really amazing. It's great. Your writing is good. It's mature and all that. And I thought, ah, I am a poet. I had labeled myself a poet because, you know, a teacher is trying to not break my, my morale. I mean, from the word go, you're having all these titles. You're a songwriter. Your aunt is calling you a songwriter. Yeah. You know, they're calling you poet. Now you think your future, your teacher told you, oh, man, this is your future. Like, yeah. Yeah and, yeah, and along the way, like I'd written things and that one, I had written for, there were competitions in school that I would write for my house, I'd write for my school. Yeah, and, and then, then at the end of the day, you win a cup. Yeah, I win, I win something. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, this, this is me. This is my genre. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my bad B era. <laughs> but anyway, so when I joined... In my form six back, it was very funny how I even got into poetry for real. Because my mom paid for me to do a tailoring course. I didn't want, actually to date, I don't want. <laughs> even when I look at my friends who are making something for themselves through fashion and design, I'm like, good for you, oh, yeah, not, not for me. For me. <laughs> I don't want. So my mom forces me and she, she kept on giving me transport to go to that school where I was doing the tailoring doing the tailoring stuff from. So I did that for a week. Then I remember my my bestie tells me, you know what? I have a friend of mine. She tells me they usually go to national theater. They do this poetry stuff. They do acting and all that. And that's your type of stuff. You should go. This is from Six Flag. I didn't even like stop. I didn't hesitate. I was like, ah, transport is there even. Transport mm -hmm, to go to school. So I started going and I did my first, my very first show in Form 6 VAC with Kagai Pizza, that was Chitara Nation versus in VAC. Mm -hmm. But like when I joined, I realized I was nothing because I met all these other different people who had been doing poetry. Students you actually like realized myself. The, the era was not your era, it, it was, was not, not your bad era. era. Oh. Oh <laughs> You've been lying God. to yourself all along. Like, people wow. were so good. They would write, I remember this girl, Bridget, oh my goodness, like, I used to think my interpretation of poetry was it has to be precise. You tell a story in a few words. I didn't know that poetry can be an epic because like when I did education, I did English and literature, I realized that poetry evolved from being an epic, a whole, let me say a whole novel of poetry. So I didn't know these things. And I'm seeing this girl is writing a whole story and it's coming off of her head. She's just like, 
giving lines and lines and punchlines and I'm like, what have I been doing? Like I was ashamed to even recite my poetry and I'm like, no, you were just, uh, what is it? Uh, you were the one eyed man among us, the blind, wherever yes. you were. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like this, come to this the ones kids, that. This yeah? kids where I was like, nothing. Ah, I was the boss. It's like, oh my goodness, that girl, she speaks good English, writes poems. And ah, I came where a girl speak good English and write, like, oh my God. It was amazing. I had never seen that. I did not know that the poetry culture was that amazing in Uganda. I really didn't. I exist in people this small People do not know bubble. that. People do not people know. People really don't. Know. don't. No, they need to know it. Yeah. I don't know how we're going to do that. I don't but know. But this is the way. So I, so, I hope so. Yeah. I really pray so. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, anyway, so I get with Peter Kaga. He helped me. He nurtured me. And I became better at what I was doing. I, I wrote better. I... I there was transition in my poetry and I saw that. I don't even think I ever told him that. I don't even think he ever saw that. So we need to he, give him his flowers Yes, here. we need to give him his flowers because there was transition from the kind of poetry I was writing mm. to what it became when I met Peter. And that is how I grew into the kind of poetry that I'm writing even to date. So I took a break from poetry being... Um, doing education. I, I feel like these are the excuses I tell myself to not accept that I was procrastinating, but I was doing education. There were so many course units. I was <laughs> geographically, my campus is also, my, was far. Yeah, it's far. It's so far. it all became a lot. The workload kind of not really it's a lie. I was just procrastinating. <laughs> and anyway, so 2020 election time, I'm just like an ad taken so long when I stopped going to National Theatre with Peter it's like I even took so long to write I would write once in a while but not really really like how it was with Peter there was the the pressure but beautiful pressure to yeah, write I know, I know. yeah so anyway and now here I am and I'm just I was watching the news and it is so much the people that are being short because I saw this um this girl she had gone to to work. The one who was, was this, having the fruits and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, the one who had yeah. the fruits and yeah. whatnot. And she was short. It's terrible. Man. And it was terrible. And the thing that came to my head was this this could be my mom. Because my mom my mom has raised us. She's, she's not like a big scale Anna. She's a small scale Anna. And she tells us before she made like the little progress that, because she calls it little because our parents are always being noble and whatnot. The little progress that she made with her life now where she started from. She was like me, I used to move around with, I used to move around in taxi park with with these um, bottles of juice. I used to literally hawk my juice. I'd make juice and hawk it. So when I see this girl and I'm like, a few years back, this could have been my mother. You know, it could have been my mother. I've woken up, I want to go look for, to give my, give my kids something. And she doesn't come back alive. And she doesn't come back alive. Terrible. It was terrible. And then it just like, cause me, I, while I can write a poem in one sitting, my best poems have come from me writing. I write a stanza, I write a stanza, I just like keep noting them down. Yeah. Not some on my phone, not some somewhere else. And then I converge it all into a poem at once. So I was just sitting there and the very last lines of the poems are the ones that came first to me. I was just sitting there and I'm like, huh, now Ugandans are scared of going to work because their places of work look so much like a graveyard. So, two days, I wrote the whole piece, I put it together. And when I read the piece, I cried. I'm just like an emotional junkie. It was amazing. I cried. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is, this is the best thing I've ever done. And I'm like, it can't stay in the book. Yeah, I, I had a friend of mine, he's called Ndelea. He was doing photography and singing as well. Lucky. So I call Lucky and I'm like, I want to record. I see you do you do little um, covers for songs. I want to record. He's like, okay. So I'm thinking this guy, this because he would send me covers of songs here. I'm thinking this whole time this guy has been like working in um studio or something, something like that. <laughs> I reached first of all, it was my ex's my ex's place, but he's my nice ex. I like him. He's a nice person. So like I reached. And I'm like, you didn't even tell me this is where we're doing the recording from. He's like, yeah, it's it's what's convenient. And I'm like, how are we doing the recording from here? So you see that closet? That's where we're recording from. Like, oh. So I'm, I'm okay. I'm all about creative, but... Hey, this is more than this creative. Is 
this is so ghetto. But I would always, anytime I reach a bad situation, rock bottom, I tell myself, this is going to sound so nice in the success story. I'm going to be like, <laughs> I know. I did this and this yeah. and this before I got here. So we just put, we cushioned the walls with mattresses. And I started recording. So I started recording. This guy is like, I don't feel the emotion. He was using his phone. I'd forgotten about that. Oh. His iPhone. <laughs> over seven. Yeah. <laughs> he was using his phone. And he's, he's like, okay, yeah, so I need to hear emotion. And what I need you to record this poem, like how you wrote it. And I'm like, okay, fine. Let's start. We record, we record. So that very night, he told me, Asha, this thing is amazing. I'm done with it. And, I'm and like, you can't okay. wait here. I'm like, okay, you send it. And the moment he sent it like this, I was like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. This is amazing. You're back to your air. Your bad be like, air. Oh this is what my teacher was talking about in P6. This is my life. <laughs> <laughs> this right here is the blood that flows through me. Oh my God. So I sent it to my contacts, my friends, and all that. And the first thing that made me feel so nice was. My cousin brother forwarded a voice note of a friend of his. His friend was, he used to run a PlayStation test, you know, those guys. Yeah. And I don't know a lot about his education background, but to be honest, he's not someone who would consider a poet. Not even think about poetry at all. And this guy was telling me, OMG, this is your... This is the little girl who came because I'd done campaigns in my high school. Who came wanting to do posters at my place? I came. Yo, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. I feel she's talking to me like... The thing about the poem is it was a political... It was a risky piece. Like, as to be honest, up to date, people keep on telling me, you never pushed that poem. But yes, I never did because I was so scared. I was like, this this sounds like an out, out, outright attack to whomsoever is governing the country. It's an attack and ah, 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 no, 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 no. I was just trying to be creative. I wasn't trying to do that. Yeah. That is not what I was aiming at. But so yeah, my cousin also put it, put it up on his podcast. He's like, you know, I know you and he really does. I lose things, I lose pictures, I lose my, I lose very important things because I keep losing and changing phones. So you so, lost it? I thought you had shared it to your friends. Maybe I had, you yeah, I had shared it, but like, and, I, they don't owe it to me to keep yeah, it. I know, I know. They don't. So my cousin put it on his podcast as a way of preserving it. And he tells me like that, that episode was really aired. People really enjoyed it. People liked it. They, they say you should do more. And yeah, of course, I stepped into my procrastination era again. And, and then I lost contact with Lucky. And yeah, studio sessions are for paying for. And I want the next time, <laughs> the next time I do this, I want to do it like in a good, in a professional way with good sound and all that and blah, blah, not like in some ghetto way. So yeah. And but the ghetto paid off, you remember? Yeah, the ghetto really paid That's off. One thing that is certain, we need to have a conversation with Peter. Because every person right. I'm talking to, political, I'm talking oh, political, goodness, like, because it's the one that has taught you all these things. Oh yeah, so. oh yeah, and, <laughs> and I never even, I never even used to write a lot into the political scene until I hear, I hear, I, I actually just had the line. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it was a whole poem. I just had him saying the line just one time randomly, and he's like, "My country is it? Is, my country is like a poorly taken selfie," and I paused. My body took a screenshot. Wow. Because I took related. The selfie, the selfie that you were talking yes. about. <laughs> I related so, so hard. And my dad, God dressed him before, before he died. He was into the political seed and all that. Yes. But I had told myself, no, I don't want to be into politics. I don't want to be like him. But I guess I am my, father. I am my father's daughter at the end of that day. Yeah. Maybe I'm not campaigning like he was. I'm not into the politics but I'm doing it some somewhere else because almost everything I write keeps on taking that turn. It takes that turn. I'm like, I'm gonna write a love poem and boom. It's a love so you need to have a debate. To you need to have a debate with Mohammed Drema or she she does not believe in jeans. Yes, that's the, the expression I had I'm like oh, what? what? <laughs> How can she, she know it? I'm stuck so, with a Nubian nose because of my dad. What is she even talking about? <laughs> What is even talking about? I need, to, I need to. I really need to. But um, 
one thing I have loved about poetry, above all the other things that I can do, is it shocks people when they hear the kinds of things that can come out of my mouth. The, the word play, I love that. I love that it introduces people to this Asha. This, ah, mm -hmm. you didn't I know, know I could. The cool kid. <laughs> yeah, the cool kid. Oh yeah, people had always told me it's a cool kid thing. Poetry is a cool kid thing, but it's really not because when I was writing that poem about police brutality, I wasn't writing as a cool kid. I was writing as, as a, as a citizen who's hurt by what's going on in the country. Like poetry, poetry is the, now that I actually studied these things at campus, yeah. poetry mm -hmm. is the mother. People need to bow down. She's the mother. It's literally where everything began from. So as we come to a conclusion of this, um, something that's really getting to me, I'm like, why aren't people listening to these pieces? Why aren't people listening to you? What do we need to do? I mean, what exactly do we need to do? Because I don't know. It's just, um, to be honest, there is nothing, there is, and I'm not saying this like to be a, what is it called, pessimistic. There is nothing you can do with, with people whose mentors are rigid, you know? And I'm not like shooting at Ugandans that their mentors are rigid or whatnot or blah, blah, or all that. But there is a certain form of, because while poetry is poetry, it's also entertainment. Yeah, a lot of I it know. is education, but it's also entertainment. So people are, they, they are streamlined to this form of entertainment. Like, it's not just poetry that's lagging behind. There are other forms of entertainment in Uganda that are lagging behind. We see that there is some that's up, up there. Yeah. And then there is still some that's just struggling. And it's not that not good things aren't happening. The good things are actually happening. It's that people choose choose to go with something that's easier to go with you know i've done poetry for since i was eight years old but the first time i actually got recognition even other people like being like oh poetry was because i did it in audio form and then with, it gets with, back to, sound to us marketing that. ourselves our friends marketing us yeah. yeah the people that we know so that they tell people that do not know us and in that way we're going to reach males. We're going to go far away, more than this. So we need to be as good as we are to ourselves, to our friends, and our friends will tell their friends, and their friends tell their friends, and then yeah, we'll be I very also feel like yeah? we are growing. Hmm? Yeah, we honest, are. It's we evolution, are. evolution, yeah, evolution. But it depends. There's gradual and rapid. Yeah. I, mean, I, I oh, like the slow burn. Yeah, the it's <laughs> organic. It's organic. You're yeah. growing organically. I get that. You're growing organically, yeah. not inorganically. You're like one day you're here. You the next day you're and then you're down. Yeah, it's very crazy, true. man. It's crazy, yeah. And Asha, we could have gone ages with this conversation. We could have gone and inspired. I don't know how to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess we have to do so. We have to do that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for having me. Yeah. My the pleasure is all mine. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs>